don't care, Natalie. Where do you want to eat? How about a little taco taco with the tico tico? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Mexican food is too hot. And I'm all the fire you can handle. <laughs> Chinese food? OK, Chinese food it is. Of course. You know what's going to happen. An hour after you kiss me goodnight, you're going to be hungry for me again. <laughs> I'll pick you up right away. It's past quitting time. And Natalie, why don't you wear the dress with the plunging neckline? Yeah, you know, the one that makes my eyes do all the plunging. <laughs> Okay, pussycat. See you soon. Kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> I'll be down to get you in a taxi, honey. Better be ready about half past eight. Oh, don't be late. <laughs> and start cleaning. Two step down. Gonna have a ball. I was taking a nap, and when I woke up, I was tied down with dental floss. That's very funny. There's a lot of practical jokes in the Navy, but tying a man down with dental floss is one of the dumbest. Daniels, what do you do if there's a fire? A fire? That's right, a fire. <laughs> well, first, I figure out what classification of fire was. Like, was it class A, B, or C? A class A fire is a fire you fight with just plain water. That's because it's just ordinary material that's burned. But a class B or C, well, that's a whole different story, and you have to fight those with chemicals. So once I knew for sure what kind of fire I was dealing with, I'd give the alarm. <laughs> that's terrific. In the meantime, Skolnick turns into a Jewish shush kebab. <laughs> Kowalski, I'm surprised at you. Do you like people making Polish jokes? Is that a Polish joke? No. <laughs> No, you're a Polish joke. <laughs> Rodriguez, what about you? What do you have to say? Mire, jefe, no me pregunto a mí. Scully, no me dejes estar con este problema. Tú sabes que yo no tengo nada que ver con esto. No me pregunten a mí. Rodriguez, this isn't a Cesar Chavez rally. <laughs> now, what did you say? Chief, I don't have anything to do with it, and that's for sure. <laughs> for sure? You better be sure. You better chip up or chip out. Yes, sir. Mignon, I think you're at the bottom of all of this. Am I right? Well, Chief, I have to admit that I did have a small part in it. A small part? How small a part? About as small as Mussolini in World War II? <laughs> Mignoni, I'm telling you, you try that again, and I'm going to hang you by your pasta of azul. <laughs> you got that? Yes, Chief. All right. The rest of you guys, listen up. Just because it's the end of the day, there's no goofing off. Tomorrow you have classes, and you got a lot of homework. I want you to study. Now get to it. <laughs> Chief? Chief? What is it, Skolnick? Can someone untie me? Skolnick, this whole thing was your fault because you wanted to take a nap. The next time you're tired, check into the Bite We Rest Home. <laughs> They'll even help you in and out of the toilet. <laughs> Somebody cut him loose. I'll be down to get you in a taxi. <laughs> Better be ready about half past eight. Da, 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 don't be late. I want to be there when the band starts playing. Da, 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 where get there, honey. Oh, Chief, you're still here. No, I left an hour ago. <laughs> You're talking to Tinkerbell. <laughs> what is it? What do you want, Pruitt? Oh, a new man in the barracks, and he's checking in. Oh, what's the matter? Couldn't you handle it? What am I, the welcome wagon hostess? <laughs> what do you say we get some Sara Lee cakes and call in the neighbors? <laughs> I just thought you'd like to meet him before you take off for the day. You can come on in, Apodaca. What's his name? Apodaca. Apodaca? That sounds like something you use on a rash. Seaman Apodaca reporting for duty, Chief. Oh, here's his papers, Chief. You can put down your bag, Apodaca. <laughs> what do you got in there, a Buick? Well, no, Chief. See, I'm a machinery repairman. I like to carry a lot of tools around with me. You never know when something's going to need fixing. 
Good. I can overhaul and repair stuff, like pumps, switches, compressors. Swell. I operate machine shop equipment, like drill presses, bench grinders, power hacksaws. Fine. I work with precision instruments, like calipers, gauge blocks, and motor Apodaca. Yeah, Chief. You're boring me. I also do boring, grinding, cutting. Go away! Pruitt, get this man out of here. Assign him to a bunk and locker. Right, Chief. Is there anything I can do, Chief? No, just uh, put away your gear and do something to amuse yourself. I sing, dance, play the... Go! <laughs> Boy, he's sure a queer bird, ain't he? Yeah, he sure is. Well, so long, Pruitt. I mean, what made him think you'd be interested in hearing about all those things he knows how to do? Yeah, well, so long, Pruitt. I bet you got a lot better things to do than stand around and listen to some windbag run off with the mouth. Pruitt, now you're doing it. Doing what? Pruitt. Why don't you get a basketball and dribble past the Jolly Green Giant? <laughs> get a basketball and dribble past the Jolly Green Giant? Boy, you keep coming up with new ones all the time, Chief, don't you? Get a basketball and dribble past him. Jeez. <laughs> Hey, I'm glad I caught you. I thought you'd be gone. Don't stop me, Robinson. I've been trying to get out of here for the last half hour. You got a date with a lady? No, I got a date with the Secretary of the Navy. We're going to the beach and we're going to go skinny dipping. <laughs> of course I got a date with a lady. <laughs> Goodbye, Robinson. Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. You don't even know why I came in here. Can I borrow your typewriter? Mine's broken. Yeah, you can use it, but wash your hands before you do. <laughs> what? And don't eat while you're using the typewriter. What is this? Well, I don't want to get grease on the keys. Oh, you mean like from ribs? <laughs> yeah. Well, suppose I lick my fingers before I peck. You know, lick and peck, lick and peck. <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, so, boss, I know what you mean. I ain't gonna get no grease on these young keys. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure my hands is nice and white, boss. <laughs> Thank you, boss. Thank you, boss. Praise the Lord, boss. <laughs> Hello, Natalie. I was held up. What are you doing, pussycat? Oh, you just stepped out of a bubble bath? Oh. I wish I could be there to make the bubbles go pop. Here I come, ready or not. I'll be down to get you in the taxi, honey. You better be ready by half past eight. Da, 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 da. Gonna have a ball, gonna dance off. Oh, good evening, Lieutenant Whipple, sir. Uh, good evening. I just dropped by to tell you some news. Guess what? What? Admiral Kearns is on his way here to pay us a visit. <laughs> Iron Bottom Kearns himself is coming to our base. <laughs> Do you ever hear how he got the name Iron Bottom Kern? No, no, sir, I don't think I ever did. Oh, well, sit down here and let me tell you about it. <laughs> it was uh, during World War II, he was on a destroyer in the South Pacific, you see? And he sat for 72 hours, never got out of his chair, just waiting for this Japanese submarine to surface. Think about it, 72 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, someone said, that man must have an iron bottom. Oh, that's very interesting, sir. Very interesting. <laughs> Isn't it? I, I just wanted to let you know about the distinguished guest we're getting. You're leaving, sir? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. I, uh, I'm going back to headquarters to check on the exact time the Admiral will be arriving. <laughs> very good, sir. <laughs> I just remember a story that they tell about him when he was still at Annapolis. Uproarious. Absolutely uproarious. Yes, well, I'm... Dying to hear it someday, sir. Yes, well, in order to do it justice, we need an hour. An hour? <laughs> well, I'll, t I'll tell it to you one day. In the meantime, I just wanted to stop by and tell you about Admiral Kern so you could rig your ship for visitors. Carry on. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm down to get you in the taxi. Hey, 
Shark, what's wrong with this typewriter? Don't stop me. Not again, Robinson. That's what I get for hanging around this barracks after quitting time. OK, OK. I just want to know why your typewriter's not working. I don't know, and I don't care. I have a date waiting for me. I'll see you, Robinson. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Lieutenant Whipple's out there. I tell him I left. <laughs> uh, Chief Sharkey? Uh, he's gone, sir. Gone? Well, yeah. he was here a moment ago. Uh, he has some business to take care of, sir, yes. Rats! <laughs> uh -huh. Did he leave? Yeah, he left. Hey, Shark, tell me about this typewriter. Take a cab, Robinson. <laughs> Chief Sharky, I'm glad I caught you. I don't know, uh, I don't know what this business you have to take care of is, but it can't be more important than the business I have for you. Me, sir? Yes, I was just on my way back to headquarters, received word that Admiral Kearns will be landing at the Naval Air Station in about an hour. <laughs> I want you to take a staff car, go out and pick him up. Me, sir? Oh, I certainly can't send anybody less than a chief petty officer, and that's you. Me, sir? Chief, you're wasting time to hop to it. And if the Admiral is in a good mood, he may tell you some of his World War II stories. Me, sir? Well, you know what they say, the best laid plans of mice and men. Yeah, I know. And now I know what I have to do to get away from all you yo-yos. What's that? Move off the base, get an apartment in town. An apartment? That's right, someplace where I can have privacy, peace and quiet. Hey, Shark, that's not a bad idea. I was thinking about doing that too. What do you say to the idea of you and I sharing an apartment? No, Robinson. It won't work. Why not? Because I plan to integrate with Natalie, not you. Well, here it is, Mr. Starkey. I think you'll like it. It's shocky, ma'am. I'm sure I'll like it. It's, it's very nice. All I want is peace and quiet. Well, you just sit right down in that chair and let me show you how quiet it is. Now, see, you can't hear traffic or anything. It's very nice. What'd you say? I said it's very nice. Oh, yes. You're just like my former tenant, Mr. Farnsworth. May his soul rest in peace. Did Mr. Farnsworth? Yes. He liked peace and quiet, too. He used to sit all day quietly and watch television. As a matter of fact, that's where we found him, sitting in this chair watching Oral Roberts. <laughs> now, there's something I'd like to ask you, Mr. Starkey. Sharkey. You're in the Navy. And I want you to know that I just love sailors. My first husband was in the Navy. Oh, is that so? Yeah, but unfortunately, he liked to, uh... <laughs> you mean he liked to take a taste? Well, yes, he'd taste it and like it and finish the bottle. <laughs> he was somewhat of a tippler. No, he was more of a boozer. <laughs> Oh, I see. You know, there are sailors who like to... Uh, <laughs> and I hope you're not planning to have any wild drinking parties. Oh, nothing like that, Mrs. Finch. I'll have a dinner party occasionally, invite a young lady friend up to spend the evening, if that's all right. Oh, certainly. Mrs. Barnesworth had a lady friend that came twice a week. That's very nice. Well, if you'll excuse me... Oh, Another thing, when you play your television, please don't play it too loudly because I'm right beneath you. Oh, don't worry, Mrs. Finch. Well, in case you would play it a little too loud, I'll just tap on the ceiling with my broom. Oh, that won't be necessary, Mrs. Finch. Oh, by the way, there's a Lutheran church right around the corner. <laughs> a Lutheran church, good to know. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Farnsworth was laid out. Oh, is that so? Oh, I hope you'll be very happy here, Mr. Sharky. Sharky, I'm sure I will be. Oh, thank you. You know, I have to watch my step because I broke my hip once, and I don't want that thing to happen again. You know, I was laid up for six weeks, and I don't want to go through all that again, you know? <laughs> Yeah. 
out to get you in a taxi, honey. Better be ready about half past eight. Cause I, da 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 be late. Gonna be there when my hand starts playing. Da ba da da. Yeah, da da da. Da da da. Have a ball. Gonna date so close. <laughs> She's early. She's anxious. She's ready. <laughs> Just a minute. <laughs> coming, coming. <laughs> coming, coming, coming. Won't you come into my parlor? Said the spider to the fly. Hi, spider, it's Superfly. What are you doing here? Oh, I thought I'd drop by. Well, Robinson, this is a bad time. Oh, you expecting company? Robinson, no, I'm doing a Manischewitz commercial. Of course I'm expecting company. Now, Robinson, you gotta get out of here. I just came down here to check out your place. I'm expecting a broad here for dinner. Now, will you get out of here? Unless you want to put on a white jacket and serve. <laughs> no, thanks, I'll leave. Oh, come on. Oh, wait a shock. Uh, since you got your own apartment and everything, you mind if I take the coffee maker from your office? I don't have one of my own. You can take the coffee maker and the typewriter. Now, get out of here. Shark, can I stay and meet your lady? I've never seen her. What does she look like? She looks like a lady. Like your lady. Only a little more pastel. <laughs> Goodbye, Robinson. You see that? You hung around. Now you're gonna meet her. Help me with the candles. <laughs> After you meet her... Mm -hmm. I'm as sorry as I can be to bother you like this, and I would have done it if it wasn't this important. Pruitt, could you wait till morning? Is it that important? Well, sir, it's about where Apodaca sleeps tonight. You see, he turned down the bunk that was assigned to him. In fact, he turned down every other bunk that was assigned to him. Oh, really? Then why don't we get him a water bed and stock it with tuna? <laughs> he ain't telling it right, Chief. I didn't turn nothing down. He turned it down. Oh, no, I didn't. You call me a liar? I ain't calling you nothing. Tell him what happened. I told him. No, you didn't. Oh, yes, I no, did. No, I told him. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Now, you see? Not a landlady heard the noise. Now we'll have to get out of here. Come on. Don't worry, Chief. I'll sleep any way you tell me. No, you won't. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, no, you won't. I told you once. You're blind. I'm going to wrap your hands. Hold it. Hold it. Now, you see, there's my company. Robinson, do you mind? How do you mind? Come on. Oh, what are you guys doing here? The ghetto's on the other side of town. We got something really heavy to lay on you, Chief. That's right, Chief, and you're the only one that can help us. Our instructor at Radio Man School, he wants to kick us out. And you know why? He said my hair is too long and I gotta cut it. It's not too long, it's regulation length. I ain't cut my afro, he can kiss my afro. <laughs> And he's gonna throw me out, Chief, because he says he can't understand my English. Buen estúpido man, yo hablo inglés mejor que él y que todos los campesinos que tienen esa clase. And he knows that. What are we gonna do about that guy? Yeah, yeah Chief, man, that's oh, crazy. Man, he can't throw us because he can't throw us. Shh, wait, wait. It's that landlady again. You guys are making too much noise. Now you gotta get out of here. Chief. Oh, Kowalski, welcome to the Wild Kingdom. <laughs> Sorry to bother you, but I lost my ID card. I know you, yeah, you and your you practical are. jokes. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I can get the chief to tell you where you hid my dress shoes. I didn't take your dress shoes, you idiot. Don't go mean it, moron. I'm gonna redo your nose, you know, know that? Knock it off. Knock it off. I want to know what guy gave out my address. Oh, chief? I posted it on the bulletin board. <laughs> you know, in case there was an emergency. Pruitt, I hope all of your nails split. <laughs> you know what else, Pruitt? If you and these guys aren't out of here by the time I count to five, I'm gonna roll you up in balls and bounce you out the window. <laughs> what am I gonna do with Apodaca yeah, here? What what do do
have any wild drinking parties. And look at this bunch of drunken sailors. <laughs> oh, if they only knew what they were doing to their livers. But Mrs. Finch. Out. Everybody, get. Sorry, Chief. Sorry, Chief. Sorry, sorry, Chief. And you, too, Mr. Starkey. <laughs> Shocky. Well, what are we gonna do now? Well, take care of these candles. Light them? Huh? Blow them out, light them. Natalie, you're on your own. But listen, Natalie, give me another chance. I'll take you any place you want to go. You want champagne, you can have champagne. Anything, anything. I know it's my last chance. Thank you, Natalie, thank you. I'm walking out the door right now and straight into your arms. Clock. Here I go. <laughs> goodbye, Robson, goodbye. I just, just goodbye. It's Lieutenant Whipple. He's coming. Uh, don't, don't tell him I'm here. Uh, tell him I left. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's how he caught you last time, remember? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, tell him I died in the Philippines. Uh, tell him I'm in the Philippines and I'm going to die. Tell him anything. I don't care. Oh, good evening. Chief Sharkey not here? Uh, no, sir. He's gone for the day, sir. Oh, what a shame. I promised to tell him a story about Admiral Kearns, and to do it justice, it takes about an hour. I had a little extra time to kill. Uh, yes, sir, but he's gone for the day, sir. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's too bad. <laughs> Perhaps, sir, you'd like to hear it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's an uproarious story, absolutely uproarious. Go ahead, you'll really appreciate this. Sit down here, sit down. Let me tell it to you. <laughs> It has to do uh, with Admiral Kearns when he was still at Annapolis before he got his, his nickname. <laughs> uh, but, by the way, did you ever hear how he got the nickname Iron Bottom? No, no, I haven't, sir. Oh, well, I'll tell you that one more. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Bottom Fort. <laughs> 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 